Nililala kiali Nika utandoto Gigila dari salaman Lime wakamoto Chekere chekere Kono la bangiri Mina kupenda Wadni fanyangiri Baba mdogo Isho nekoti Mwana mke mwema Nimu honge noti Chekere chekere Kono la bangiri Mimi na kupenda Wani fanyangiri Music, 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 music. Have you ever tried to think of what, how, what the world would be without music? Ah, I don't think you ever have. It's like people never think, how would the world be without the air we breathe? You don't think about it, you just enjoy it. Yeah, let's do this. How many of you like bongo flavor? Please raise your hands and keep them there up. How many of you love Singeli? Raise your hands. I still don't, don't, don't. Nobody should put their hands down. How many of you love gospel music? Okay. And how many of you love Tarab music? Uh -huh. Well, as you can see, almost every one of us loves one type of music or the other. And then there are people like me who love all types of music and enjoy everything. <laughs> anyway, my name is, like I was introduced, my name is John Kitsime. First, I'm a musician, and I'll talk about it soon. <laughs> and then I'm a historian, and I'll tell you what history is about. History is very nice and interesting. History can actually explain why you are you, why you are where you are, <laughs> you get me? And I'm an archivist, I always get, this word is very hard. I am doing this, but I don't know how to really explore, uh, mention it or call it archivist. Now let's get back to history a bit. Let's go back to the late 19th century, sometime around 18, uh, uh, between 1855, in 1890, the Germans were ruling, were already ruling this country, which we now call Tanzania, and, but they still had lots of resistance. There was a chief in uh, Tabora, a Nyamwezi chief called Chief Isike, who was really a thorn in the flesh of the Germans. In the end, they decided that going to have to make peace with him. So they went to Chief Isike and really tricked him in a way, saying, we're not going to fight you and you shouldn't fight us. But furthermore, they tricked him and told him and told Chief Isike to give his daughter, a very small girl, around 10 years old, to be taken by the German soldiers as a guarantee that Chief Isike would not fight the Germans. And Chief Isike gave his daughter to the German soldiers, and they took her from Tabora to Bagamoyo, 800 kilometers away. In those days, there were no trains, there were no cars, and horses were only for the German officers. So the rest of the people marched. And this small girl, hardly 10 years, had to march all the way from Tabora to Bagamoyo. In Bagamoyo, this little girl was given to a, a French officer, actually. And somehow, she ended up getting sold as a slave. She was sold three times. Her last slave master gave her a name, Chausiku. Every morning, Chausiku and a fellow slave 
would be sent out to the streets to sell vitumbua, in the streets of Bagamoyo in those days. Tunauza vitumbua, tunauza vitumbua. One day these two little girls passed a house and there were people, and there were children singing in that house. And as children, when they heard other children singing, they were really very interested in joining the singing. So they knocked the door and uh, a white woman came out of the door and asked them, what do you want? They said, we want to join the singing. Said, you have to pay. And they didn't have money, but they said they would come back when they got money. What they did is they started a side business of selling mangoes and the vitumbua for their slave master. With the mangoes, they managed to collect enough money to go and join the other singing children. On the last day of going to join the singing children, Chausiku's fellow slave girl got scared and didn't join her. And Chausiku went alone, knocked the door, she was invited in, paid her uh, whatever fee, and joined the other singing children. And that's where she learned that it was not singing, it was actually a school. These were children learning how to read and write. And so Chausiku joined there, learned how to read and write, and later she was baptized as a Catholic and was given the name Adelaide. A few years later, some German uh, Catholic priests, the Benedictines, as they're known, started a journey going to Iringa to start uh, to build a Catholic church in Iringa. And Adelaide joined them. She got married there, and now I am her great grandchild. That's poor Adelaide. So, here I am, or I am whom I am, or I am what I am, because of a girl who wanted to join singing. So music is very, 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 very important to me. It's not just fun, it's made me who I am. If the girl hadn't joined the singing, or didn't like singing, maybe I would not have been born, or maybe I would have been born, uh, I don't know. <laughs> That's how... I, that's how important singing or music is to me. But let's go back to and talk about the history of music in our country, Tanzania. Let's get back to the 19th century. All over the, uh, the country there were different tribes, and all these tribes had their own kind of music. And actually it was called own kind of ngomas. Ngoma is much more than just music. Ngoma, first, is the instrument. We know the instrument is called ngoma. The occasion where the ngoma is played is called ngoma. Ngoma mavuno, ngoma ajando, ngoma ya unyago, ausio. And this, every, every occasion or every ngoma has got a different name. It's so much so that in all our, so far, in all the more than 120 tribes that we have in Tanzania, there isn't one tribe that has a word that can translate the word music. Because the music in, the, in traditional music is very, has got a very different meaning to the music that we know as we know it now. So this ngoma is much more than just music. Even though these days it's just called traditional music because, well, can't escape the word. So, when the Germans came here, that late in those uh, 19th century, they came with their music. In particular, because the army came here first, it came with the German marching music, the German army music. And the Germans coming here started building, you, you, they start, their first urban spaces started coming up, which were, like, say, let's say, Iringa, example, it started as a German fault. And we know several towns that started mostly first as German posts or became bigger because of the German army making posts there. And the German came with this music, the marching band music. Youngsters, musicians from different tribes, actually different youngsters from different tribes, would come to these urban centers to get jobs, 
would come to these urban centers, maybe just to enjoy being away from their village. And so you, for the first time, youngsters from different tribes met in a common place. And when the young people meet, young, nice things start. They needed music. The only common music was the German marching band music, because each one came from a different tribe. So this became the only common music. And what these youngsters did, now that they'd met, Wanyakusa, Wahehe, I don't know, Wakinga, Wamakonde, suddenly they meet, they started a new kind of music. This new kind of music was like copying this German music. They started making their own traditional drums, and because they couldn't get saxophones and trumpets, they started making their own saxophones and trumpets from reeds, from uh, gouds, and uh, just to get the sound that sounded like the saxophone, the trumpet, and stuff. And they call this music Beni music. Beni Ngoma. Beni Ngoma was very, became very popular. It was the first urban music in our country. It was so popular, it said it was popular all the way from South Sudan, along the coast, all the way to northern Mozambique. That's how popular it was. And again, this Beni music did a, another very great service to this country, which is still now. Because these youngsters came from different tribes, speaking different languages, they got together, they started playing a common music, and they started using a common language, which was Kiswahili. Beningoma well, did help in spreading Kiswahili in the first days of Kiswahili, becoming, later becoming our national language. In 1904, after the First World War, the Germans lost the war. And in losing the war, they lost this country. This country was given to the British. The British came here into this country and finding the youths, the only music was the Beningoma. But the British didn't like this Beningoma music because it was uniting people from all over, uniting youths from all over. And, unite, and you know, any good colonizer knows that the way, best way to rule a country is to divide it. They have a, word, a phrase, divide and rule. Now, this Beningoma is actually bringing the youths together. So the first thing the British did was to ban Beningoma. Strictly ban Beningoma. It disappeared. But it somehow, in some places, survives till today. You all know Mganda from Mwamanda. You know Mganda? Who, who doesn't know this uh, traditional Ngoma called Mganda from the Wamanda? or Lingoma from the Wanyakusa. It's, the, it's a kind of a, a traditional dance where, one, they wear uniforms, and they have a leader who gives them orders how to march, just like the soldiers used to do. So these are some of the of traditional, of which uh, Benin Goma, which have turned into traditional music. So you have them in uh, Mbea, you have them in Wamanda, in Songea. They're very popular in Malawi. Uh, where they, in Malawi, actually, they still is practically like now a very com uh, 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 one of the popular kinds of music in Malawi, the Beningoma, the Beningoma type of music. Fine. That's a good thing about history. That's what I say. When you know history, or if you learn history, you actually get to know why you're here, how you arrived there. For me, I'm just looking like poor guys. They're actually back to where, they were in, where we were in the 60s. And actually feel they are so great. Well, I told you the, the last thing that I'm doing is archiving. Archiving is like uh, collecting all the old materials, the historical materials, and putting up. I've started a small uh, music, Tanzanian music archive. I have it at uh, Nafasi Art Space. You're all welcome, very much welcome uh, to here, strange music. I've got some very strange music there. I've got uh, uh, some music from the soldiers in the Second World War singing from Kariako. You know the story of Kariako, I guess. Kariako was, uh, it actually started from Keria Company. During the Second World War, they were, 
there, were tra- there, were, there weren't so many cars or lorries, so people had to carry those luggages, the weapons and the food and everything for the soldiers. And they were called Carrier Company. Now, the headquarters of Carrier Company was where Carrier Co is now. So, Carrier Co, Carrier Co, because they used to shorten it because of Carrier Company, it's just Carrier Co and become, has become Carrier Co. So, I have a cassette actually from a recording of the Carrier Company soldiers singing all those uh, old war songs. Uh, I have a very interesting song. It was recorded in the 50s. It's about Dar es Salaam. There's this guy complaining. Sita and the Tena, Dar es Salaam. Sita and the Tana, Dar es Salaam. Kuna wana wake, wana danganya wana ume. Two weeks ago, I, was, I went to Tanga. Arusha and Moshi tried to collect stories, histories, pictures, photographs, newspaper cuttings, cassettes, audio, audio and video. It was quite interesting. Enjoy. Thank you. My name is John Kipian. Thanks. Thanks.